Welcome again to PTA Global Community. Thank you for, uh, for joining us on this. What we have today is a special treat, and I'm very honored to be sitting here with Roy Sugarman, Dr. Roy Sugarman. He's in Australia, so we've got a long distance relationship going here. And just so you guys know, if you're not aware, he's posted uh, quite a few times on our Facebook, and we've seen him with Ian O'Dwyer at, at AN Studio. But Dr. Sugarman is the Director of Applied Neuroscience at Athletes Performance, and that's part of the Mark Verstegen worldwide kind of global gig that he's got. We'll talk to Mark later on as well. But he's their, their Director of Applied Neuroscience there, and he's also a clinical neuropsychologist and psychologist, and he really is into brain rehab and establishing vitality kind of through the mind and brain connection into our body. And so, Roy, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on, so thank you for joining. Roy, what we're, we're doing is we're talking about the concept of triangulation, and we've talked with Gary Gray, who kind of coined the term and really brought it to the forefront in our industry. And triangulation is essentially three-dimensional motion, not just direction, but height and depth and distance to our motions. Now, bringing in your expertise and your, your understanding of, of neuroscience and how the brain works, how is triangulation and using triangulation in our movement so important and so vital for our brain and the brain health? Well, the, the, the thing that the brain really hates is routine. The brain loves routine in one way, but it hates it in the other. And it loves it because routine is a great thing to do. The brain can simply switch off. It can go to sleep. It can relax. It can make a few phone calls. It can date a few good-looking women. The brain can go on a holiday. And routine is great. But if you want to build something of value up there, you have to move. And here's the reason why. Apart from all the obvious things like this, this is motor, motor activity, activity and that's, that's motor, motor activity. activity. The biggest of our motor, motor activities is our thinking. thinking. So, so our, our thinking, thinking is a form of motor, motor activity, activity and, and we, we can, can do, do that, that while we're moving, moving. but that's, that's not a good thing. thing. It, it means, means that we're, we're not, not really concentrating on moving. So if, if you, you take traditional bodybuilding, if I'm just doing pull down behinds or I'm doing Bicep curls, mm -hmm. I can I do it in my sleep. sleep. So the, the brain, brain isn't gaining anything. anything. The brain, brain switches off. On the, On the other hand, hand, if you now take novelty, novelty you get the brain's, brain's attention. attention. If you, you could, could see, see the brain, brain sit up and take notice, notice, it would be the frontal areas, mm -hmm. the talking, the, talking, the thinking, thinking, the planning, the trying, the trying, trying to work out what I'm going to have for breakfast. It's working, working out what's healthy and not healthy. healthy. This, this is making the brain, brain work. work. So, so when you describe you triangulation, which is moving within, let's say, a bubble around you in three dimensions, right. and not only doing it in three dimensions, but varying that movement virtually with every step, with every movement of your body, your brain is forced to work. And when the brain works, it creates connections. And when you build up connections, you build up a storehouse of resilience. So as you get older, there's more brain cells knocking about, and there's more connections knocking about. You're building up a richer brain. And so whatever comes along, stresses and worries and anxiety and age and damage from Friday night at the pub, mm -hmm. you're prepared. And that's what Three Dimensions does. It creates novelty, which builds the brain, and it keeps your brain active and watching what you're doing. And, you know, you touched on something because you, you hit two things. Is One, the power of the, the triangulation and the novelty versus kind of our traditional training. Because traditionally, we, yeah. did, we, we never really triangulate or never triangulated in, in the past. And kind of the way we're taught is this machine does this and this exercise does this. And we never vary. Now, you brought up something that was really important that I know we've touched on a little bit at PTA Global. And that was kind of the the random movement where it's not in a pattern. So it's not the same repetitive motion, even if I'm triangulating that motion where I've taken it to a different distance relative to where I would normally do it or a different height relative to where I'm normally. It's the concept of doing that differently with every repetition of motion. Yes. And, and it's also saying, at the same time, yeah, sorry, it's also at the same time engaging the visual spatial side of the brain to decide where your foot is going next. Because mm. once you've done A to B, A to B, A to B, your brain is switched off. But if you're going A to B, 
A to C, A to D, A to E, your brain remains engaged, planning where your foot is going to land, the acceleration, deceleration, the eccentric loading, and so on. All of that is demanding real-time brain activity. Looking at it from, from your clinical experience, if I triangulate motion, if I'm a trainer and I'm getting my, my clients to triangulate their motion and, and, and even getting so progressive as to vary that position or the place that they converge every single repetition, can I or how can I affect my client's mood, their, their behavior, so to speak? Is, is that something that is within my scope of practice by using movement, I can actually help kind of gauge or monitor or work on someone's mood or behavior. Is that possible? Let's look at what constitutes fun for a human being. Fun is novelty. Fun is creativity. So if you keep on going back to the gym with a little white card in front of you, and every day you go to the pet machine, and then you go to the lap machine, and then you go to the bicycle, and then you do that, your brain isn't having fun because there's nothing novelty. Mm -hmm. If you imagine telling someone a joke, you know, guy walks into a bar, he goes, ouch. You know, what makes that sort of funny? You know, horse walks into a bar, why the long face? <laughs> it's that you're expecting something to come, but something different comes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's what makes it fun. That's what stimulates humor because it's stimulating dopamine. So novelty and creativity and all of that stuff is what we interpret as fun. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh. I just had my screensaver come in. And again, what happened there is my screensaver comes in. It blanks everything out. My brain is forced into action. But what happens? Where does the fun come in? I challenge you with a new movement. Mm -hmm. I say to you, I want you to do this lunge, but I want you to do it in three different planes, in three different segments. And at the same time, I want you to bat this balloon away with your left arm while dialing on your mobile phone and telling your wife you're going to be late for dinner with your right hand. Um, when I conquer that movement, I get a sense of achievement, and again, that's fun. Yeah. So fun is achievement, novelty, challenge. There's nothing challenging about routine. So where my brain starts to have fun and stimulates dopamine and serotonin starts to come in behind that, that elevates your mood. It's like eating a plate of pasta or having a pizza or eating junk food. You'll notice when you're really hungry, if you go and do some mobilizers, not stretching, but good 3D mobilizers, mm -hmm. your appetite changes and you find you want to eat differently. Because no longer is the glucose in a certain way, no longer is the ghrelin and the leptin and the cholecystokinin acting. You've changed your brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. That elevates your mood, so you start to look for healthier options. So all of that feeds in just through movement, because movement is thought. And novel movement is fun, and it elevates your mood. And by the way, I think you just stimulated a new challenge for us, is the, the appetite and what we <laughs> eat after following certain movements. So that, that might end up as the next challenge on PTA Global. Roy, last yeah, here's thing, a great one. I... <laughs> here's a great one, a quick one for you, yes. is that we found that willpower, willpower to do something is related to your glucose levels. Mm. And by forcing your body into strange and novel activity, you're actually releasing a lot of glucose and you're changing your willpower. So it actually, movement sustains movement. That's the fun thing. Roy, thanks so much. Last thing I want to, want to make sure our, our viewers get is, how do we get more information on what you do and some of the things that you're related to and related with? How can we find out and find you if we need to? Sure. The best place to look for me, I guess, is on Facebook. Um, and I'm happy to answer personal questions there and, and general questions there as well. And I'll tell you why. Um, Paul Taylor and I and other people mm -hmm. sort of putting our heads together in the last five or six years have gone through about 25,000 articles and about five, 600 books a year. Wow. Uh, between us. So it's pretty complex when people say, I want to learn more. Well, the best thing to do is ask myself, right. ask Paul. So I encourage people to get hold of people like yourself, like Paul Taylor, Ian O'Dwyer, and myself. You'll find us on Facebook. We're happy to talk. We're happy to, uh, you know, and I, I put a lot of stuff as I come across it in mm -hmm. the literature. Mm -hmm. I post it on my Facebook. So look for Roy Sugarman, S-U-G-A-R-M-A, and I'll, I'll log you in as a friend. Um, and certainly if you say, hey, Roy, saw you on PD Global, I'll log you in, and then you can ask me questions on Facebook, which I love answering because there's great debates. Yeah. And second of all, um, you can go offline and we can chat separately if, if you really want to. And in that way, I can bring you all of that knowledge uh, without you having to do the legwork because it's pretty hard. And I'm getting old. You know, I've been doing this for 30, 40 years now. Yeah. And um, there are a lot of websites out there, but I, what I do is – and myself and my colleagues, we give you peer-reviewed stuff. We show you what the literature is really converging at.
and how the brain and body collide in a good way. So I don't want people to get brain damage through colliding with a personal trainer, uh, you know, in the gym doing, you know, <laughs> curls. Um, but certainly, you know, me and the guys can, can help you worldwide, and that's the great thing about social networking. So please feel free to contact me through Athletes Performance or through Facebook is the easiest way. All right. Thanks, Rodney, for giving me this chance to, uh, to talk to you. I'm very happy to do that. Our pleasure, and hopefully we have uh, we have many more of these interludes because this is absolutely brilliant, and I know our viewers are going to go nuts over this stuff. So, Roy, I can't thank you enough, and we'll jump on, and make sure you guys jump on and, and, uh, and approach him on Facebook. Just tell him that you saw him on PTA Global, and he'll uh, log you in, and away we go, and you'll have a wealth of information beyond anything you ever dreamed of. Roy, thanks for your time. Enjoy your, your winter day down there, and I uh, look forward to spring coming, I'm sure. Thank you, Roy. Thanks, thanks Rodney. Take care. All right. Bye-bye now.